Hey guys, Henning and Morton from Flip Normals here. In this video, we're gonna talk quickly about what is the difference between EV and cycles in Blender. There's a lot of chatter about this online, so we just wanted to have a just a discussion about what are the strengths and what are the weaknesses. We have two renders here. We have this and we have this. Here you can see the difference between EV and cycles. This is uh, this is a render from cycles, and this is from EV. This, um, this scene here comes from our newly released introduction to Blender series, where you're taught how to model, shade, uh, texture, and light this entire scene here. So this is the final render from that series. So as you can see, there are some pretty notable differences between them. One of them is the render time. If you look at the render time, this is 1 minute and 16 seconds, and this is 5 seconds. And this looks pretty good, but if you compare the actual quality, you can see that this here is far more refined. So Cycles is amazing if you're going for realism. It's really, really good for that. It's doing, it's doing its computation based on physically plausible uh, algorithms. And Cycles or Eevee is really good if you want to visualize something quickly. This is, a, this is essentially a real-time render engine, and you can very quickly just change your shaders around, change your lights around, but because it is so quick and it runs on a GPU, and it's, it's cheating a lot. It's really doing a lot of cheats under the hood just to get you these, these effects. So you can see some limitations here is that we, we don't have the proper shadows. You can see we're missing a lot of shadows here. We, uh, we also have way less accurate reflections as well. And in general, you can just see there is just a lot more visual fidelity in this render. What, what's important here is that these are not competitors. Like looking at an image comparison like this, it's not entirely fair. Because in, in this case, if you want a good result, you'll be like, well, clearly Cycles is beating the hell out of Eevee. But you can't really compare them like this. You wouldn't necessarily say which engine are we using for the final render of our project you will be thinking more which engine are we using in different stages of our project if you are animating you're doing a tons of, of play blast which essentially means that you are rendering out your animation so that you you can you can see it in full 24 fps with um, hopefully as close as you can to the final render you obviously can't do that with cycles. Cycles would take far too long to render. It would be too noisy and it would be really hard to evaluate what's going on. But with Eevee, you can get really a really good approximation of what your animation will look like and what your final scene is going to look like with textures, with shaders on it. So it's not so much which is better. They just have very different stages in a project. Yeah, like when I've been doing any kind of look dev in Blender. I always go with Eevee to start with because I can block things out really quickly. Even when I'm modeling, maybe I have some lights. If I'm sculpting as well, I've been using Eevee as well for that because it like real time I'll be able to see what I'm sculpting. It helps me visualize the forms a lot better. And you can, you know, you can shade a hundred percent real time. You can do this like it's with cycles to an extent as well. You know, if you if you set it to GPU rendering as well, it'll be be faster than using the CPU for rendering, but you do have the issue with cycles for real-time rendering that it, it's a path tracer and, you know, it, each ray needs to be traced, it needs to be bounced around, it needs to compute GI. There's a lot of things that needs to be computed on top that you don't have to compute in Eevee, so it really depends on your needs. Yeah, and that's also like a pro and con for it as well because it's doing all these com computations yeah it takes a lot longer but the result is so much more accurate for instance if you want to uh, if you want to get realistic skin you, you need to use cycles because you need ray traced substrate for scattering but if you need quick visualizations then you can get a decent approximation in in eevee as well we can easily change between eevee and cycles up here in our render settings we can just very quickly just go between them so right now we have eevee enabled and you can see how quick it is to, to use it up here. If you're just rotating around, you can see the result is essentially, it's essentially real time here. If you want to change the shader, you want to enable something in it, it's, it's very, very quick to, to go in and change, and change your settings for it. You can just see instantly we, we, have a, we have a new computation of our result. Now, one thing you have to keep in mind, even with Eevee, 
despite it being real time or whatever it's there's still a computation happening when you let go of the camera so when you rotate things around it'll go to like a i don't know if it's like a lower resolution it'll it'll disable some reflections maybe some lights aren't as accurate the shadows aren't as accurate then you leave it for half a second and it like it computes on whatever still frame you now have so there is a little bit of extra computation on top as well yeah definitely it's it's not definitely not a hundred percent real time uh, there are some limitations of EV as well. So you can't just go one-to-one -one between the two. Uh, there are limitations such as EV not supporting displacement shaders at this point. It also doesn't support the bevel shader. And obviously it, it is missing essential features such as uh, like properly ray traced reflections and subsurface scattering. Uh, there, is a there are a bunch more limitations to it. We won't get too deep into the specific nodes missing, but just know that you can't just go between them one to one. Maybe this is something that'll change in the near future once RTX cards become more and more standard. You know, you have all these demos coming out now with NVIDIA RTX cards. I think it's, it's yeah, it's Minecraft. They're releasing Minecraft as a fully fully real-time ray traced game now where you can you walk around and like everything is is ray traced in in real time you know so you could see something like that being implemented later later on in blender i think yeah i'm very excited to see where where ev is going to go in in the future it, it has a lot of potential and it's already really good if we switch the render engine out to cycles you can now see how much slower this is to compute there is a lot more noise as well. That's really one of the disadvantages, or it's not even a disadvantage. It's just, it, it is just the way it is. Uh, if you if you have if you have a path tracer or a ray tracer, you are just going to have significantly more noise. But it, you also have a way more accurate result than you do as well. But you can also see cycles is cycles is pretty fast. So in general, the just to sum up the pros and cons of it. When it comes to cycles, the pro is that it is really good for photorealistic results. If you're looking for, um, if you're doing something like uh, like a realistic um, animation, like something what uh, like Pixar and Disney are doing, where they're aiming for really photorealistic shaders and lights, then you want to use cycles. Same if you're doing any kind of real commercial movie whatever it might be cycles is really the way to go it is really feature rich and is uh, really physically based the pro or the cons of it though is that it is it's significantly slower it's significantly noisier and it also has more settings as well so uh, it can be a bit more complicated to get into luckily though it's 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 fairly it's fairly simple to use if you just want to get into cycles if you want to really go in depth there are a lot of settings, but if you just want to go in, render something out and uh, get a noise free result, it's not terribly hard to do, but just be aware that it, there are more things to fiddle with in order to get a noise free result. Yeah, I found that, you know, I, I've been using V-Ray for the past 10, 12 years, something like that. And that's always been my preferred render of choice. Uh, I use Mentor Ray for a bit as well, but that's just garbage. We don't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, ever since switching to Blender and starting using Cycles, Cycles has really just become my default way to render because Cycles is so simple. Like you were talking about it being very comparable to how Arnold works as well, like minimal settings. It's physically based. You don't have to worry about setting up very specific sample settings or noise settings, bounces for lights, whatever. You just, you know, you just click render and it just works out of the box. With Eevee, the pros are the, the main things for which supports it is really that it is super duper fast. It's amazing for previewing. It's awesome for visualization. And there are tons of jobs in 3D which they don't they don't require photorealism. Like so many of them require speed over the final result. Like anything to do with previs or like we mentioned when it comes to like a, a play blast or anything along the way as well, which doesn't require the final frames. EV is a fantastic engine for that. Yeah, imagine it, like using this for for previous. Like usually when we get a previous thing, it's just it's just garbage. It looks you know, so you, bad. You have a play blast from like Maya's viewport 2.0, which is supposed to be like this revolutionary thing ten years ago, but <laughs> it's like they stopped developing it. And they were talking about, oh, we're gonna have this real time displacement in the viewport, and I feel like all these things never came. This is where I think EV really has an edge. Obviously, uh, you won't have that in a major software package that's currently being used but you know if you if you had something like that and you wanted to do previous in blender eevee would be a, a, a like a massive strength yeah 
just be aware again the cons it lacks realism and it, it does have a limited feature feature set as well so if you if you are going to be let's say you you're looking at um, at ev and you decide to use that for final rendering for your project let's say you're doing something more stylized i recommend that you go into the documentation and actually look into the limitations of it as well because there are some there are some limitations which could potentially be breaking for a project one of them is that it runs entirely on the gpu so if you have a crappy GPU and an awesome CPU, you are in for a very hard time. Or if you rely on a lot of very heavy textures, even though they might be stylized and your GPU isn't amazing, uh, this, this, could, this could lead to your C not, not really performing at all or not being able to render. Yeah, if your project, let's say your project relies heavily on using volumetrics, EV probably shouldn't be the choice there because volumetrics just aren't as good and they run slower in EV compared to, to cycles. So it's, it's definitely worth going through the documentation. Blender has a, a outline of EV restrictions or things that are lacking in EV that would be good to keep in mind if you are thinking about using it for a project. So yeah, I suppose this sums up uh, quite well. Let us know what you think about EV versus cycles in the comments. Uh, subscribe and hit the notification bell to get notified every single time we put out a new video. And thank you so much for watching. And if you're interested in professional training or 3D assets, 2D assets, 2D training, whatever it is, trying to advance your career within the CG visual effects or animation industry, make sure to pop over to the Flip Normals Marketplace and grab something from there.